Ciao, fellow Vita comrades, and welcome. Today, I'd like to introduce you a new member of the Zeloschuk handheld family, the Steam Deck. I'm aware that this is primarily a Vita-focused channel, but when I take a look at the research tab at YouTube Analytics, the most searched term by my viewers, by you, is a Steam Deck. So here we are, looking at my initial thoughts and first impressions of the deck. So let's get cracking. Ok, so I wanna keep this video as concise and on point as possible. It's not a comprehensive review, it's more of a first look from a handheld guy perspective. So where shall we begin? I reckon we shall begin where this channel is rooted in. It's rooted within the homebrew, the ports, the emulators, the plugins. Which is why I believe the Steam Deck is almost as a Vita successor in a way. I know it's not made by Sony, but we all know Sony isn't gonna make one anytime soon. And even if it would make one. I doubt they would take similar open-minded approach like Valve did with the Linux-based OS. When I first heard it, I wasn't completely sold out on that idea, but now, when I hold it in my hands, it is crystal clear they could have not done anything better or more beneficial for its success. You know, cause to me it looks like with stock Steam Deck, you got more and better options than with exploited Switch or Vita or even with the rooted phone for example. Which is mind-blowing and I'm all for it. Now quickly to the build quality and general look and feel of the device. Overall, I think they've done a pretty good job. Only minor nitpick I have is with the LNR1. I'd prefer if they could be triggered more from the side, not so much from the top. But they are still very usable. What about the size of the device? Is it huge? Well, it's not small, but it is still portable. People often say my hands are huge. I would argue. Michael Jordan's hands are huge, mine's are just about average, and the deck fits them perfectly. I was thinking why they have done it uh, the way they did, with the action buttons on the side of joysticks, and clearly it's cause of the trackpads, they are positioned on the usual face button spot. For me, again, no big deal, small brain adjustment and my fingers go there automatically. However, if Valve would ever eventually decide to get rid of them, cut few centimeters of the side, Put smaller screen inside, like 5.5 inch, I wouldn't mind all it. With same internals and call it a deck light or deck slim or whatever, I'll be first in line to buy it. Now why Steam Deck? Why not something else? I was deciding between the deck and Aya Neo Air. Yes, Aya Neo Air is smaller with OLED, but also weaker, more expensive and only God knows when would I eventually get one. So naturally, price to performance to availability ratio was on the deck side. Especially when I saw the tweet that the production is faster than ever and they are on track to fulfill all reservation before the end of the year. I pulled the trigger at 25th of September, I purchased it 29th of September and I was finally firmly holding it at 7th of October. Nice speed valve and now you can even get it without reservation. So if you don't want to wait and it's available in your country, perhaps now is the best time to get one in like 4 weeks time. And of course this is not a sponsored video, I wish it was. This is all based purely on my personal subjective opinion and it tells me 350 quid is insanely good deal compared to the competition and it's certainly miles better than the Switch OLED which is selling for not much cheaper. I'd get the 64 gig model cause I haven't seen much point paying so much more for so little in return and I feel like 90% of deck users are gonna be absolutely fine with this version too Cause as you may know, for average user, price point is the biggest deal breaker and 350 quid is hard to argue with. That's for sure, add their 50 quid for 512 gig micro SD and you are sorted for a nice while. Valve can afford to keep the price point down cause they're gonna make the profit from us purchasing the games and I'm fine with that cause they are not forcing me to buy anything and I'm free to enjoy the deck the way I intended it to. The emulation way, cause we all know Steam Deck is no slouch in this field. And here we are coming to the point I wanna stress the most. Deck isn't just for playing AAA games over your Steam account, it's perfect for emulation too. And that's exactly my primary use case scenario that I had in mind while purchasing it. Who wouldn't want to play their favorite childhood titles? Portable Dreamcast, PS2, PS3, Xbox, Wii U, Switch and much more all in one neat device. What a time to be alive. Deck, the final frontier, these are the voyages of the Steam Deck and its mission to explore strange new emulators, to seek out new challenges and new plugins, 
to boldly go where no handheld <laughs> has gone before. <laughs> For now, I have been only exploring the PCSX2 and RPCS3, it's all quite new for me, so it will take a while until I assimilate all the secrets and all the bells and whistles they have to offer. PCSX2 runs extremely well, I've tried like dozens of games and all of them was running spot on as you can see on the gameplay footage. I haven't been changing any settings, it's all on default. I've just installed it from EmuDeck and it has done all the hard work for me. Shout out to the guys over at EmuDeck.com for making our emulation journey such a breeze. It's greatly appreciated. I've been trying games like Need for Speed Underground 1 and 2, Burnout 3, Devil May Cry, Echo, Shadow of Colossus, Soldier of Fortune and so far Steam Deck proves to be brilliant portable PS2. RPCS3 runs also very good, clearly not all the PS3 games are gonna be playable. Skate 3 runs great, as well as Dark Souls, but for example Red Dead Redemption is very slow, but honestly I was surprised it is even running, cause these PS3 games I imagine require quite a lot of horsepower to run it, so it is no small task even for Steam Deck. Overall I've been truly impressed by the state of emulation on the deck, even though I haven't tried that many emulators. It is still mind-blowing how far have we come in terms of portable handheld gaming. Clearly this is just the beginning of my journey, because there is so much more to explore in emulation and in native gaming too. I'm also not entirely sure what I can and what I cannot to show you to avoid being hit with another co copyright strike, so I'm extremely cautious and watching my steps. So in the end, is the Steam Deck the ultimate evolution of the handheld gaming? I tend to agree, but I own it just for a few days, so I'm gonna need to spend more time with it to give you some kind of reasonable, comprehensive conclusion. In case you wanna see more Steam Deck videos on this channel in the future, give this video a like and subscribe. The usual Vita content isn't going anywhere, it is here to stay forever, or at least for as long as we are not gonna get terminated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Namaste! To go at steampower.com to click the button to shell out all the money that you owe to the world and then be happy as a six year old child. Seeing there in the house, playing emulation station all day long. I know that we cannot play it all day long. Cause we wanna have a balanced life. Big time.